Welcome to the Fresh is the Word podcast. I'm your host, Kay Fresh. It's Monday, January 25th. And guess what that means? My birthday is over. Partied so hard this weekend that the recovery was painful. Oh my God. But I had a blast. So thank you to Goodnight Gracie, Josh Adams. All the staff at Goodnight Gracie's, everybody that came out, all the strangers that I partied with, it was another another birthday for the books. And last night, I watched the Royal Rumble, the WWE Royal Rumble. All in all, it was an amazing show. It was probably one of the best pay-per-views they've had in a while, probably since the last WrestleMania. It was stacked, pack to pack, you know, back to back. Every match was good. You know, he started off with Kevin Owens versus Dean Ambrose, last man standing match. Dean Ambrose won, but it was a phenomenal match. It's probably that could go down as one of the best matches of the year. Um, the Becky Lynch Charlotte match was great. I wish my boo Becky Lynch won though, but you know Charlotte played dirty with with help of the pops Ric Flair. Um, Kalisto versus Del Rio, the homie Kalisto won the belt back. Hell yeah. Then you had uh, the New Day versus the Usos. And of course, New Day won. They're amazing. It was an amazing, it was an amazing match. All the, all the matches before the Rumble were amazing. But then the Rumble came, and the Rumble was awesome. There was, there was so many surprises. My, and the biggest surprise was my favorite wrestler in the, entire, in the entire world, my favorite wrestler in the entire world, AJ Styles de- debuted. To an amazing pop from the crowd. There was a little speculation of like, you know, they're worried. It, would this crowd, would the crowd know who AJ Styles is? Because he was never a big part of WWE, WCW or anything. He was a, he was a TNA wrestler. Then he went, to New, he went to Ring of Honor in New Japan. He was big in all of those uh, companies. But he was never in a company that Vince McMahon owned. He did a few like house shows and dark matches like way back in like 2001 2002 in WWF but he was he was always big elsewhere but when he came out it was crazy like I I marked out oh like I I was I'm very emotional about this so it was really really amazing to see him he stayed in for like 25 minutes he was he was eventually eliminated by Kevin Owens which that might set up a feud between AJ Styles and Kevin Owens which will be freaking lit if that happens that'll be a really good really good feud and and what i noticed too aj styles you can tell man, he is one of the best wrestlers in the, in the entire world and you can just see that his athletic ability in comparison to everybody else in the ring is very unique and super 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 excited super excited to see what goes on with goes on on raw tonight um, I'm probably going to drop another podcast later on this week, so maybe I'll talk about what happened on Raw then. Um, word is that AJ Styles' first t-shirt sales that they had in the WWE shop have already sold out. So any sort of you know, worry that the company had about whether the crowd, the, the WWE Universe, would actually know who AJ Styles is was quickly answered, and it was amazing. Um, of course, uh, Roman Reigns lost the belt last night to, uh, he ended up getting, uh, eliminated by Triple H. Triple H came out as number 30 in the Royal Rumble. We all kind of knew that was going to happen. And then, uh, the last two were Dean Ambrose and Triple H and, uh, you know, Triple H eliminated Dean Ambrose, uh, to win the belt. And it was kind of, we all kind of predicted that this was going to happen, um, I was kind of hoping it would be some sort of a shocker. Maybe Dean Ambrose would have won, or maybe AJ Styles would have won. If if, they, if AJ Styles won the Royal Rumble last night and won the belt, I might have broke down in tears. That would have been the happiest moment. It was already the best birthday gift ever for me to see my favorite wrestler in the entire planet, AJ Styles, finally be finally debut in WWE. So... That was a perfect end to my birthday weekend. Okay, let's get to the show. Got an amazing band for you today. 
Um, we're not. Gonna, we're gonna talk all about music. We're gonna talk. Um, there's a band. They're from uh, L.A. They go by Stitched Up Heart. I first heard about this band this past summer when they were on tour with One Eyed Doll, who we all, I also had on the show previously in one of the first episodes. Uh, they opened and they were just awesome. And they're just a really cool group of people, uh, led by their own lead singer uh, Mixie. Uh, they're very much. It's they're like a heavy hard rock band. Uh, I was able to sit down with them at the Ink Addict uh, flagship store in Ferndale, Michigan, when they were uh, passing through on their way to um, a show in I believe in Grand Rapids, and and it was le- and they. We we talked about you know how you know you know their music uh, linking up with another century uh, records. Uh, they're currently working on their uh, new album. Uh, Mixie is really involved with fostering uh, kitty cats and definitely just um, a big proponent to you know kitten rescues. And uh, even when they're on tour, they you know they have a little donation bin. Um, at their uh, merch booth to you know pick up donations to uh to send to the LA kitten rescue which so that that's super cool I'm a cat person so we definitely connected uh we also you know gave them a little education on Detroit strip clubs too that was kind of a fun part of it so uh, I really like to you know shout out to uh Stitch Up Heart for taking the time to you know be on the podcast and definitely shout out to Ink Attic in our Ferndale for uh you know let me do the hold the interview there and you know hooking me up with a you know a little bit of with a t-shirt at a you know they have they definitely have some cool gear you know so um if you're ever in Ferndale over there on Woodward and Marshall Marshall is is a street like just north of 8 Mile so it's right on the corner of Marshall and Woodward and Ferndale uh they got some cool gear that you know of of their own in there so go ahead and you know check it out so uh, let's get to the interview with Stitched Apart. Okay, cool. We're at uh, Ink Attic, Ink Attic's uh, flagship store in Ferndale. We're here at Stitched Up Heart. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourselves. I'm Randy, the bass player for Stitched Up Heart. I'm Doran, I play guitar. I'm Merritt, I play guitar. I'm Decker, I'm the drummer. And I'm Mixie, and I sing. And we also have our merch girl here, Josie. Yeah. Say <laughs> hi, Josie. Hi. <laughs> the merch girl is always the unsung hero of the band. She is, and she's always in every interview, but she's not always present. We always end up bringing her up because yes. she likes to steal all our cupcakes. Yeah, usually every she's week. eating during the interviews. So. Yeah, oh, we always mention her during the interviews. It's good that yeah. you're actually at this interview. Yeah, great. <laughs> Wait, how is, it, how is it like to be with... This band, you know, and, and tour with them, be the merch girl. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> In detail. <laughs> All right, I just, I just, <laughs> I just witnessed an epic ping pong battle here with the band. Uh, it went from like one on one to two on two to two on three. Barrett was judging. It was. Yeah. We're talking about a ping pong game, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I, yeah, I think I made that clear. I might have uh, got the word ping pong. Mary usually <laughs> likes to watch. Um, <laughs> to get really bad. Usually. Are we, wait, are we talking about ping pong stuff? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we clearly need to practice our ping pong skills a little bit. Yeah, well, we are professional athletes. We worked a little yeah. bit on it in we Nebraska. Need, we didn't in stretch Nebraska. and warm up first. That's really what happened. Yeah. Always, always warm up. Yeah, you always got to get your, you know, <laughs> your wrist action, you know, yeah. outside. Stretchy. You know, stretch, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Make, yeah. Sure, you're make, sure, you don't, make sure you don't If those balls are going to be flying around, then... You really got to make sure that you're warmed up. <laughs> yeah, look, man, all sorts of balls flying around. Yeah, this, crazy. I'm glad this isn't live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how did how did this band originally get together? Um, I actually formed the band uh, over a musical heartbreak and decided to put together a, a whole new project in 2010, um, which is the idea, the name of the band, Stitched Up Heart, is putting something back together and picking yourself back up again and. Um, five years later, and here we are. How's this road been, you know, for this past five years, this band, you know, trying to find your way? Um, you know, we, we did it DIY for a long time. We had some um, advice from friends that worked at labels, which actually is the label that we're on now, Another Century, and um, a little help and guidance, and, you know, everybody makes mistakes, and you got to learn 
through them and um yeah we're, we're just striving to get better and better as we go yeah i mean we never stopped like you know there, there's been ups and downs but we always knew that we wanted to to keep going to keep doing this it was you know each of us has had those moments where we're like oh you know i don't know if i can do this anymore and then luckily we've had somebody there to help pick us back up we're like no you have to do this you know? yeah how um you guys are on another century right now how did you uh, link up with that label uh like i said i've been friends with a, a lot of the team of people that work there for since the band started and um I just know that they are really good at what they do, specifically in our genre, and so um, I, I just really like kind of listened to what they had to say and took notes and like tried to you know kind of go in that direction. And once we built the band up to where it is now, then they were like, "All right, let's take a shot at this and see how how it goes." And it's been going full sail, like in the uh, the right direction. So, when you were forming this band. And through the past five years, what was your kind of idea of how you wanted this band to sound? Um, well, originally I wasn't supposed to, I wanted like a jazzy thing with the vocals. I wanted like heavy guitars and um, some really cool drum beats and Decker throws down. Um, and uh, I originally wanted a lot more screaming. So it started off where I wrote parts for lyrics where there was screaming and I didn't plan on screaming because I didn't know I could. <laughs> um, and then when we would practice, I just started screaming at practices and just like to show the people like where the screams were. I was like, whoa, I could scream. I didn't even know that. <laughs> and uh, you something new. Everybody. Yeah. So then it kind of obviously we don't scream as much in the newer material. However, the, the guitars and stuff got heavier. Um, it's more melodic with the uh, the melodies and whatnot. A couple years ago, you guys uh, you know put out an EP. And since then, you're working on a, uh, an album. How do you feel like the band has progressed as you, you know, write new material? Oh, tremendously. Uh, the last record we put out, DIY, we wrote it in a lockout. Oh, we wrote 30 songs and we <coughs> recorded it in a lockout. Uh, we picked between those 30 songs that we wrote in like three months, like the six top ones that we liked. Um, obviously, if you're going to write 30 songs in that short period of time, you're really not going to put that much effort into each individual song. You're like, okay, there's one, here's another, here's another. Yeah. This record, this new one coming out in the spring with Another Century is going to be a full length and it'll be every song we put all our heart into every word and every note and every, like, we really, really think about everything we're trying to say in that song and musically. So. Um, there's a lot more thought put into it. Yeah, I mean, last one was quantity over quality. Now it's quality, quality over quantity. Quality over quantity, yeah. Was there any ideas that came about those original 30 songs that kind of flourished into something in the new material? Um, I still just have that set aside uh, just for, like, references, but I haven't pulled from it because I'm in a different place in life than when I wrote a lot of those lyrics and stuff. Um, where, I mean, I have that as a backup plan that I could go back and, like, and look at that, but... Uh, but I just, when we write, when we've been writing on this record, we're in the studio with like a mic and just tracking down the raw ideas that come out right there and then and there. And that's the art right there, purely without any influence from the past. So it's like, yeah, it's this all is happening just, right there. yeah, right in that, in that second. So, <clears throat> so yeah, so when you're uh, creating new music, is it just something you just go into the studio and just kind of see how it goes just hammer it out yeah see what happens yeah no like usually if we have an idea that we're going to go in with we don't do that at all <laughs> <laughs> right. if we have an idea all right i got this idea let's go in and do that yeah. and then it's complete opposite of what we originally started with yeah um and it's always a blessing in disguise it'll be like okay let's uh let's make a slow song but we'll speed it up just a little bit. <laughs> okay, now what if we just put like some nice little simple guitars? What if we make the guitars a little heavier? Yeah. Okay, you know? <laughs> so it never, like even the concepts of the songs change throughout the writing process. Yeah, one of them we just completely rewrote all the lyrics. Yeah, After yeah. We wrote all the lyrics. The whole concept. Finished the song and then completely changed the entire song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After you get done with something, how do you kind of feel? Uh, how do you know that it's good versus being a complete piece of shit? Well, we're biased, so anything you create as an artist, you're gonna be like, you know, well, most of the time, you're gonna 
you know, have a heart for it, yeah. you know. But then we have other people that have opinions on it that also make decisions on it now that we have a whole team. Right. So luckily, majority of the stuff we send to them, they like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> luckily. Yeah, which, yeah, we are lucky in that. I yeah, mean, I mean, a lot of write 100 people. songs and get thumbs down on all of them, but so We far, could. We could do that. Yeah. There's a lot of bands and a lot of people that do, that, you know, send the songs and they're like, eh, you can keep writing, you know, but it seems like almost every single song we send them, they're just like, wow, okay, cool. Yeah, we're at least like 80 or 90 percent. Like yeah, about 80, 90 percent thumbs up. That's good. That's good. Now that you have like a team behind you, a label behind you, how how is that dynamic, you know, working to the band? How is it, how is it working with all those people? You'd think that if there's a whole team, like, because we used to book the tours, we used to promote, we used to yeah. book the bands on the shows that we were touring through those cities just to make sure they draw stuff that we didn't bring. Right. So, um, thought that was a lot of work. Thought that was a lot of work and thought that if we have a team of people, then there would be less work, but there's way more stuff to do that you didn't even think about before. Like, we would usually just do a tour, get to the venue at, like, 6, whatever, load in, play a show, go drive, like hang out with some friends that night. And sleep. Then sleep, eat. <laughs> uh, we used to do that. And, uh, and ah, then sleep. with uh, this. What's that? You know, the wonders of the world. <laughs> I had like three hours of sleep last night. So, um, Red Bull <laughs> or Monster, if you're listening. Anyway, so. <clears throat> um, Trying to get them sponsorships. Uh, Rockstar, yeah. Any, yeah. Uh, Starbucks. You don't even like Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> okay, coffee bean. <laughs> yes. I've told I've told I've become a, like a total Starbucks mark really really? recently. I never drank espresso, but all of a sudden I'm just like, ooh, those mocha espresso would be mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they get you. But uh, you know, um, this tour is a little different than the old DIY stuff where we just play a show. Now it's like, all right, well, you've got an acoustic radio performance in the morning. You've got like three or four interviews in the middle. you got to practice for something else that you're doing and work on the writing while you're on the road. And then you have a show tonight, too. And then since you have a radio show in the morning, you have to drive through the night and get to the radio show that next morning. You have to stay till the end to do the meet and greet after the meet show. Meet and greets. We hang out and stuff during the shows and, and everything. And then, oh, yeah, rest your voice and take vocal warm-ups and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> practice, but don't sing. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, you know, so it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a lot more stuff to do. But it, it's really exciting. It's stressful, but also really exciting. It's awesome. Mm. Uh, it's a ton of work, but we had a crazy day. Like in, we were in New York City, like for two days. That was just press, press. Three day, three things of press turned into six things of press. Yeah. <laughs> turned into like we collected like visitor passes. Like I have like well, a, we showed up at like seven a.m. in New York, and then it just like it didn't really end. Showed up that. at seven in the morning in New York from Maryland, and then ended up uh, uh, sleeping for two hours, and then headed out to a bunch of interviews and things. How do you guys kind of like prepare for like these whirlwind days where you have to be here, there, there, talk to all these people? How do, how do you just kind of like get mentally prepared for all that? I look at my Google Doc and I say, hey guys, tomorrow we have to be at Fox News in the morning. <laughs> we do at uh, 730. At one hour before we have to be there. Uh, yeah, we always tell everybody an hour before because otherwise we won't be there an hour. <laughs> but, uh, but we have to be there at 7 <laughs> in the morning. For real. For real. Uh, <clears throat> It's only three hours away, so it's not too bad, but that means we have to wake up at four. Yeah. So, but we're going to see Star Wars tonight. Yeah. So we'll go see the movie, and then... That's how we prepare. To... We just go, hey, tomorrow we're doing this. Yeah. Just, just... Yep, this is what our thing is tomorrow. I look at the Google Doc, and I see what we're going to do, and then... Just put your head down and just race with it. Yeah, you kind of have to, and um, jump in. Just jump in. Yeah. Yeah, I... I first met you briefly on the um, Halloween tour when you came here with um, One Eye Yeah. Doll. Yeah, when you had, yeah. I met in you at the Detroit. Yeah, yeah, at the uh, Token Lounge. You interviewed uh, One Eye Doll. Yeah. Yeah, that's Yeah, right. so, and that was the first time I uh, ever heard your, the band, and I was like, wow, they're really good. I saw them live, I'm like, oh, this is, this is really, like, kick-ass show. It was, like, great, like, two top headliners, you know. It was yeah. So, and um, what was, what's really funny, like, when I think about that day, it was like, I already talked with uh, Kimberly and Junior, and then I like met you, and it was like 
everybody was giving me hugs. I'm like, these are some very hu- huggable people. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just telling him, he gives me a hug. I'm like, Dude, everybody's giving me hugs with these people, man. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, these are some lovable people. <laughs> it's so nice to go to a rock show and, and get hugs. hugs. <laughs> We're so rock and roll, we give hugs. Most <laughs> <laughs> brutal embrace ever. So brutal metal hugs. <laughs> Give my brutal metal hug. Oh, yeah, no, uh, my black hug. I feel black weird. Sh- <laughs> I feel weird shaking hands. I think it's like business, business, business. And I like to get to know people in general. So like whether you know you're we're working together, we're having an interview, or we're playing a show together, or something, or we're, we're just you know talking at a I don't know festival. But it's just like, hey, nice to meet you. Here's a hug. Yeah, you know. And that's kind of something that I, I always kind of think about in this music stuff. Um, whether I'm doing shit in the hip hop scene or electronic scene or whatever, sometimes we get wrapped up in too much of like the business side of it, and we forget about the music, forget about oh, the yeah. relationships, and forget about the art of it. And it's just business, business, business. Mm-hmm. So it's so great when I see like bands like yourselves, and they'll do the meet and greets afterwards and talk with the their fans and just really have just get, give it something memorable for these people because those people don't give a fuck about the business yeah. they just want to see a good show and see their see the band that they like well those people also are the ones that make me remember why i'm doing this too like when you talk to them and they tell you how they you know the music has helped them through things and stuff like that and that really helps ground me and keep me humble in a sense that because you do kind of forget because you're like okay i gotta do this 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 and i have all this work to do and it starts to become a a real job you know um and you forget man why did i start doing this first place because i love music because it's helped me because it helps still helps me you know if i didn't do music i don't know what the heck i'd be doing like so even though it's stressful and even though it is a job and it is a really stressful job right (laughs) you know um, and it helps other people. And it does we, help. We make this art and it connects with other people. You feel in a way like when you're having a bad day and you turn on a song and like all of a sudden, you know, either you can get that feeling out, you know, from you. So that's how I always dealt with any, you know, problems that I have. Just yeah. turn on music really loud and sing it to the top of my lungs. You know? <laughs> right. What's been some of like the, you know, craziest stuff your fans have told you? There's a, a lot, so we're trying to set through, like... <laughs> what are, are we allowed to yeah. say? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like, I remember, um, well, this is horrible, but, I mean, in Flint, Michigan, see, I keep a list of quotes from the tour. Yeah. So the first show on this tour in Flint, Michigan, this lady came up to us, and she asked if we wanted to take a picture with her ovaries because she was getting them removed tomorrow. Oh. So it goes from that <laughs> to like your music really helped me through this dark time or you know I love how you help rescue kittens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you know like that we uh I am like a big fan of like I I've, I've gotten really into rescue lately. Yeah, I donated towards the fund yeah, for the show. Yeah, thank you. We raised $1400 that tour for yes. kittenrescue.org. So. I've always been a cat fan. My mom's always had cats since I was a little kid, so like I, I definitely uh, Oh, good. You're not one of those that's like I'm I like dogs, sorry. And I'm like I like dogs too. <laughs> like I don't have a problem with dogs. Oh no, I'm totally pro cat. <laughs> pro cat. My my, my, cool. ca- my mom's always had cats. Always had at least like two cats all my life and stuff. Yeah. So, I've always been around cats. So. Yeah, it's just uh, actually the first animal that I fostered was a dog, and because we live in Los Angeles, and you know, I was never home to be able to take him down five flights of stairs to go to the bathroom and pick up his poo and yeah. all that. So he just went all over the apartment, and it's like, oh, gross. So it's easier with the cat because I can, you know, have a box um, yeah. there. But uh, but I love dogs' personalities and whatnot. They're really really sweet, but it's just I can't. I don't have the time. We love alpaca personalities. We really too. like oh, yes. alpacas too. Yeah, I, I'm a big alpaca kind of guy. <laughs> I got, actually even got kicked by one last time. He did, <laughs> and, and it still it didn't change his opinion. Yeah, I still really like alpacas. It's like yeah. the only animal he loves, <laughs> and guinea pigs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and that one bites you too. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is sucker for. Abuse. Actually, when we get done with this 
14 week long tour uh which basically was one tour that turned into another tour yeah we went home for a day and that was it uh, but we on i think we have christmas eve hopefully and christmas day off and then i go back into the studio on the 26th but um so i was thinking since we're back home for like two weeks i might foster some more bottle baby kittens which like it's like having a baby you gotta like, give it milk yeah, yeah. and burp it and like make it go to the bathroom and it's uh it's interesting but uh yeah, they need help. How many cats have you like fostered? Uh, I the... think like six cats, different litters, and one dog, so far, in a year. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. There was five at once. There was right? five in at your... once. One of them's mine. And there was. Apartment. I have one cat. I only have one, but uh, the others were just borrowed cats. In an apartment <laughs> the size of this table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a is a big white fluffy kitty. Um, <laughs> I'll probably end up with another one, but for now, I feel like, you know, if I want to be able to foster, I can't keep keeping the fosters, you know? Right, right. So. I think that's what happens. There's like a law. You can only have three. Crazy cat lady. I'm already a crazy cat. Crazy cat lady. Yeah, yeah you're going to just be talking to yourself that's and talking to the cat. <laughs> well, no, there's a book on how to talk to your cat, too. Uh -huh. I sent you the picture one time. Meow, meow, meow. Meow. I know it all means food. Hi, pet me, leave me alone, clean my litter box. Yeah. That's, that's all they say to you. Yeah. <laughs> they, or they just give you that look. Yeah. <laughs> They don't say anything, they just give you the look. Like, I re yeah. I, like, um, <laughs> like, oh. food? Yeah. <laughs> does she give you the same look? Yes, she, she does. does. <laughs> and she eats all the food. All the, all the food. <laughs> That's why she's actually up here with us now, because uh, she we couldn't left, if we left her in the van, all the cookies, all the cupcakes. Yeah, she couldn't be on. trusted. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, we got a care package last night, which is five bags or something of food, and it's almost all gone, and we got it last night. Like, How is it all gone? There was like is one bag. banana bread that one I didn't get. One or two bags <laughs> left. One or two bags left. A very all hungry van. Uh, okay, well, I didn't get any, yeah. so I'm taking all of that. Yeah. You're a very hungry van. Mm. It's all healthy yes, stuff, so. We are hungry. <laughs> the the yeah. epitome of starving artists. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, you got a new single out. It's called uh, Finally Free. Mm -hmm. um, how's the f uh, feedback been about it? That uh, song thus far. Wow, that song was uh, really interesting because it was supposed to just kind of introduce the new music to everybody, and it wasn't really supposed to do anything. But then Octane picked it up, and they just started playing it like crazy. So they were like, "Well, let's just throw it at some more radio stations, see what they say." And now we're like in the top forty on the charts of Active Rock, which is crazy because I'd never even been on FM before. Yeah, we were number one on the strip club. Charts. Number one on the strip. Club. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> which is awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually, yeah, I just did an interview with strip clubs yesterday. Yeah, see here um, in uh, the Detroit area, if you don't know, the, um, the Eight Mile Road is full of strip clubs. Doesn't matter, and it goes pretty much half the state. <laughs> oh, wow. Doesn't matter. Every few, every few miles. There's a strip club. At least eight every miles. eight miles, is that how? Are there any that you no, recommend? No, less than that. Less than that. Like, there's literally every couple miles, there's a strip club. What's your favorite one? I, well, I haven't really been to the ones on Eight Mile, but the, there's one called the Coliseum. The Coliseum. Which is exactly what it, the name says. It's a Coliseum. Like, and, it's, and it's funny, they placed it in the most, like, smallest little part of land over, like, next to it is this big, like, water treatment center. And there's other stuff like that. They just found this little strip of land that goes far back and like built like the the parking lot and that there's these little like coliseum things out front and everything. So, it's a, so the strippers fight lions or I, I, I don't know what they do in there. It's <laughs> crazy. <are> strippers. <laughs> they act like gladiators like But it was funny a few years ago, I don't know if there was some sort of like strip club revitalization program but it seemed like every strip club on eight mile like renovated got it, it upgrade like renovated the outside and i'm like are they just like trying to like you know just compete with each other or, Probably. Was, or was there some sort of uh, you know government mandated revital like, revitalization program or you need a dorian is a strip club dj did you hear anything about a strip club renovation in detroit program? is there like a government grant for a for strip clubs? I would pocket some of the shit. If you're in the club for more than eight years, you don't have to pay the money back or something like yeah. that. Yeah. 
<laughs> but there, but, but downtown Detroit, there is actually another place called Bazookies. It's like like right in like Greek Town, like right downtown Detroit. And there was one time like, cause I um, I do things with um, um, with like the Red Bull team and everything. We went in that bitch like thirty deep and just like with an hour to go and just. <laughs> Bought off that bar. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> is that awesome. a place where you get to like shoot, like shoot strippers with bazookas? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't even catch that, but it was like no, like no. Bazookas is like a Greek name, I, I would uh, assume. So like, it's in Greek. Terms. I like my idea better. Yeah, that <laughs> is. Like, bazookas or bazookas? Bazookas. But that that'd be funny if you, if you could do that. <laughs> but uh, now we got a lot of <laughs> <laughs> it'd just be like Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I don't think any, but I don't GTA. think any, I don't think any strippers would work at a Grand Theft Auto uh, themed strip club, <laughs> <laughs> or they'd be right. really like really bad. I would strippers. DJ it. Totally totally, yeah, of course. Yeah, you, you might. I don't know. DJ might live. <clears throat> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Unless you have the money, then, you know. Yeah. Oh, you man. Money. <laughs> so let's get to the actual thing. Yeah. <laughs> that went on a total <laughs> tangent. Okay, get back to the, um, to finally free. Um, let, <laughs> let's talk about the song now. Um, kind of, um, what's this song about and how does it represent, you know, this next chapter in you guys' life? Um... Finally Free is basically, uh, I've been personally doing a lot of growth in the last year, um, a lot of internal research, a lot of like trying to be a better person, and a lot of realizing that, you know, we're all just alive and we're just human, and, and, and it was, when that was written, it was all about just, hey, you know what, I'm alive, like, I, I'm i just here, and like I might as well just enjoy the time that I have here, and it's just one of those wind in your hair kind of songs, you know? Um, finally free, you know? Like, it's just a, one of those aha moments, you know? Right, right, right. And anybody can answer this. Um, like, how did how did how did you guys originally just get into music? Like, whether it was that kid as a kid or teenager or whatever. Like, what what got you into the music? I, I had this these next door neighbors when I was a little kid, and they had like this cover band. And I remember they used to always uh, I'd hear them rehearsing in their house, and, and sometimes I'd go over there and watch them watch them play. It was actually like this top forty like R and B funk band or whatever it was. Oh but yeah. I, that but explains the, 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 that your song, playlist. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and for me, I, when I was five, I saw my friend play drums. Like his dad was in a band uh, called Dakota, who was like they were huge in the '80s or something. And so he'd been playing drums since he was like a baby, and he was awesome. And I was like, oh yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> so it's just right that you know, like that year, the next year, I got a drum kit and just kept playing. Never looked back. Yeah, for me. Um... My dad played guitar, and my mom made my sister and I, when we were really little, uh, go play piano. And whenever we would go to our lesson, I would always see all the guitars and all the drums, and I was was like fascinated. I thought it was so cool. And then later on, like eighth grade and so, I picked up a guitar, and you know, just went on from there. Yeah. For me, when I was seven years old, my dad and I went to a record store, and uh, he had picked out this Rammstein album off the shelf and he was just like, here, this is some weird German shit. <laughs> Do you want me to buy it for you? I was like, sure. And I actually ended up loving that like weird a few German years shit. later when I that actually was That also explains his from. playlist. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I ended up loving that a few years later when I was in junior high and kids started listening to heavy and heavier music and then for me I was just, the net most natural progression was to want to start playing guitar. Yeah, I, uh, picked up a guitar when I was 15 because I was I, I played the tuba and stuff before that but yeah. um, <laughs> but I picked up a guitar when I was 15 because I saw like a band play it was called Peterbilt it's not along uh, around anymore just a little punk band and I was like I want to do that but it was one of those moments where I just saw somebody else play and I was like that looks awesome I want to do that yeah and uh now, anytime I even look at a stage, I'm like, I want to play on that. <laughs> 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 One day we'll be there. <laughs> you know, um, so while it's, it's interesting that, like, you were probably doing that for kids, too, that come to the shows that, like, come out and they're like, 
here you go, this is what you're doomed to do for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, it's cool how a lot of these shows, especially the last couple of tours, people have been coming up, oh, this is, you know, my daughter, it's her first show, or like, you know, this is my son. Last night was a girl's ninth birthday or whatever, mm -hmm. and like a storm had her on stage with them, and yeah. you know, she was just, you could tell she was so excited, you know, about it. And that's, goes back the to little her. ones are the cutest. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, because then they get uglier the older they get. Right? Oh. <laughs> Especially like the, that's tough. Like at a, at a, at a kids show well. or something where they got the babies with like Gene Simmons makeup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know if you're cute or not, but you do look cute in the baby jeans. In the in the kiss makeup. And, and we were kiss on Halloween. And I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how Gene's makeup is really difficult to do. Especially his old makeup. Yeah. And uh and. They make those babies look perfect. It's like those babies are really good at makeup. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of excited with what you're, you know, just talking about. Um, like when you're on stage and you just look out there, out in the crowd. Like what really goes through your, your through your minds when you're just playing up there? When when uh. When I'm up there and like then when I start, well one of the points is like when I can see Mixie going like this into the crowd, then the whole crowd is Everybody's going like that. Their arms. Yeah, and like I mean, the more I see people like getting into it, the more it makes me want to go crazy and nuts up on stage. Definitely feed off the energy of yeah. the people, and I, we all try to connect with everybody. Decker will stare people down until it's uncomfortable. I, do. <laughs> I try and look at every single person. every single person <laughs> if it's possible. Sometimes you yeah. can't. You sometimes you can't see them. Sometimes yeah. there's too and many. And then I'll just stare at the shadows. Though. Yeah, I can see your silhouette back there. <laughs> um, he practices that in the mirror. I do. <laughs> but we really do all try to connect with every single person that's there and try to like look them straight in the eye and like really like know that they feel what we're feeling and the more that they move around and more people are into it the more we feed off it if people yeah. are kind of just standing there then we just get bored <laughs> like all right yeah, I mean, you feed off try. the energy we still do yeah. our best but yeah. um but we feed off the energy and it's way more fun for everybody <clears throat> for sure. when people are rocking out at a rock show yeah when, when i see people having a good time it makes me feel really good about like what i do and, and yeah. it makes me want to mm -hmm. continue yeah to do better and better. Yeah. We're always trying to be better and better. Right. Best you can be. Yeah. And then better than that. <laughs> All right, to try to, to uh, close out this uh, interview, just um, kind of, uh, you know, plug your shit. Like, where can they uh, find your stuff online, find you guys online? Uh, first off, grab the single Finally Free on iTunes. Um, and there's a music video for that. You can just look up Stitched Apart Finally Free on YouTube. Um, we're on Facebook. Just look up Stitched Apart. Uh, Twitter, just look up Stitched Up Heart. <laughs> well, uh, minus the E on Twitter. Minus the E on Stitched. Um, and Instagram. Instagram. We have like personal Snapchats and stuff. And just like, you know, you'll find it just Google or something. Yeah, connect with our personal profiles too because we'll talk Yeah, to we, we do a lot of like talking online too. We try to talk to as many people as we can online. Yeah, yeah. Not personal. on MySpace. Yeah, I haven't been on MySpace in a long time. <laughs> my profile's still there, and my Friendster profile's still there, but I, I haven't checked it. I, I usually... In like 10 years. Yeah, Friendster. What is that? Friendster. That was pre-MySpace. That was pre-MySpace, yeah. yeah. It turned into like a gaming site or something. I don't know. Live journal. Live journal. AOL Messenger. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> Going oh, way back. Age sex location. Remember? <laughs> so 14F in, what is it? Like? Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> so you can call our landlines if you want to get on. <laughs> yeah, those, those chat rooms, it would be like 14F in Ohio here. 14, like, it's like, why are, you don't remember those chat rooms? They would say that. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, actually, why do you have to tell everybody where you, your age, what you, like, where you live? Like, probably why? better off that. <laughs> Let's get it out. Of, like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, because everybody want, because everybody wanted to like just put it out there about who, who they were, you know, I yeah. guess. But then, like, if you put if you put like certain things, all of a sudden you get all these like private IMs. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You always got those. Or, or or many of the fourteen year old females from Ohio are actually like a thirty year old dude from yeah. New York. Yeah. <laughs> or I mean, well. It's, you know, and you look at people's profiles. I saw a 
somebody posted like if you never had an actual picture of yourself as your profile picture then you're 1000 percent a serial killer <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a good way to close the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, you guys. <laughs> oh, that was funny. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so that was the interview with Stitched Apart. Uh, definitely go out and support them. Uh, go uh, cop that uh, new single, Finally Free. It's on iTunes right now. And if you see them coming to town, go check them out. They're a good band live. Just a little podcast news. Uh, be on the lookout. I might drop either one or two podcasts a week from now on because I am getting a lot of interviews. And But in some of it does have some timely manner, especially the ones that center around wrestling because I'm always kind of talking about what's going about to happen at one of the upcoming pay-per-views. So I'm, I'm always going to release release one at the top of the week, either Monday or Tuesday. But look for another one maybe on Thursday or Friday also. Again, depending on the timeliness of the subject matter of the actual interview. Um, we you know, try to do a lot more episodes that also deal with wrestling. Hell, we might just talk about wrestling the whole time. You know, so be on the lookout for that. Um, I definitely... I'm loving the way that this podcast is going thus far. Um, I'm already, I'm feeling like it's growing. I feel like I'm growing with it. I'm able to open up a lot more than I did just a few months ago. We're going to be, you know, not only tackling music and wrestling, we're going to be tackling sort of the life lessons that sort of are linked to all of it. Um, There there is going to be some serious topics coming up. Um, but and we're going to talk about them in a very mature manner. Uh, this I'm very excited f- for a lot of the podcast episodes that are coming up. So please continue to listen, share it with your friends, subscribe on iTunes, subscribe on Stitcher Radio. Uh, please comment on on the iTunes and Stitcher Radio and on SoundCloud. I want your feedback. You know, you can always email me at questions at freshesthepodcast.com. If you have any questions, concerns, just want to tell me something, anything, just hit me up. That's cool. And you can also reach us on the, you know, the interwebs. We've got a few places you can check us out. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Fresh is the Word One. That's Fresh is the Word, then the number one. Um, you can also go to Facebook, go to facebook.com slash Fresh is the Podcast and give us a like on there. Um, I'm always posting about, you know, the episodes on there also. And also, you know, the website for it is freshesthepodcast.com. Everything, all the links to everything is listed on there. So if if you can't remember one thing, if you remember one thing about this all, is go to freshesthepodcast.com and you can get everywhere else. You can get to iTunes, you can get to Stitcher Radio, you can get to SoundCloud, you can get to Facebook, you can get to Instagram and Twitter. If you'd like to uh, support the Fresh is the Word podcast, you can go to our website, which is freshisthepodcast.com, and there's a link at the top that says support the podcast, and on that page, there is a PayPal link that you can donate to, or there is a Amazon link on there that you can use anytime that you want to purchase anything on Amazon. Use that link, and after you make your purchases, Amazon will shoot some commission back to me. I'll just go to help the show. Also, I definitely appreciate all the listens, and if you definitely want to share the links to the website, freshesthepodcast.com, or any of the links on SoundCloud, that's definitely appreciated and will definitely help support the podcast. Thank you again for listening, and talk to you soon. Fresh, 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 fresh